What's up guys, it's Nifty, and I'm gonna give you five different ways that you can become a better IGO. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is having a healthy, balanced lifestyle. I think that this is super important for an in-game leader, let alone all players, but for an in-game leader, because it's very normal to kind of get burned out, um, especially if you're playing like longer days of Counter-Strike or maybe really intense tournaments, you know, or maybe it's just you find it tough to, to practice with your team sometimes. Um, it's very important that whether it's something that you like to do, that you're always finding time that that uh, kind of gives you peace of mind, whether it's just relaxing or maybe it's working out or um, just socializing with friends or family or maybe even with people you haven't met, just making new friends and stuff like that. And just finding a way to balance your lifestyle because um, what I found for myself that once you enter the game after you've found a way to balance that, um, you always come with uh, intense creativity, more ideas, you're excited, um, and you're, you're just super happy to be there, and ultimately you kind of just play better CS in general. Um, so this is a very important point. The second thing that we'll talk about is uh, knowing your teammates. This is uh, crucial for an in-game leader because nobody wants to feel uh, left out. So uh, you have to know, like, for example, if you have, uh, you're gonna have an opera on your team, right? You have to know the plays that your opera likes to make um, so that you can kind of always find a way to fit those into strats or certain rounds in games so that he kind of gets his time to, to uh, you know, get the ball rolling and feel confident and, you know, just play to the best of his ability. Um, and you kind of need to know how to do that with all your teammates. Like, what's the best way to get your, you know, uh, your common entry fragger to, you know, in the game and fragging and feeling confident, you know, and, and not being afraid to take those duels. Um, so knowing your teammates and knowing how to use them is super important. Also getting to know your teammates like outside of the game, it's very important um, because I think that personalities and the way people function and make decisions um, and, and kind of how they operate in general reflects how they play in the game. This is something that I've noticed for like a long time now. So the better that you know your teammates outside the game, the better idea you probably have of how they will, uh, what their tendencies will be inside the game, you know? So like, okay, they're a more kind of like reserved person. Um, maybe they don't like to socialize that much. There's a good chance that they're kind of like a slower passive player. Um, you know, they like to think more and they're not so much the run and gun type. So maybe they need a little bit more help when it comes to like coordinating something or um, you know they, they like they feel more confident when they have more people around them um, things like that uh, I think getting to know your teammates better outside the game will will also help you understand how to use them inside the game um, so they both kind of work together the third thing we'll talk about is changing the pace uh, this is like one of the very first things that I actually learned how to do um, when I first started calling. Um, and it's very, very important in many ways. Uh, the first way is like, if you are if you start a game and you're doing great, like you're up 5-0, 6-0, you know, let's say you've been playing kind of slow, like a slow default and it's been working, or maybe you've been playing fast and it's been working, working, working. Changing the pace is a really good idea here after roughly four, five, six rounds. Um, just to give them kind of a different look because by that point they probably will want to adjust anyway um, so again just showing a different look is super important but also on the other hand of things if things aren't going well and let's say you're down you know seven two and that the rounds that you won were kind of close and iffy changing the pace might also be a good idea so so you know let's say like a rush or a very coordinated calculated fast play that you have that you've gone over and you have it in your playbook um, this is another great way to change the pace and it could get you around and especially if you do it on an important round you could set them back on an eco and you know you could string a couple rounds together um, and it'll kind of help shape the half for you um, so that's very very important the fourth thing we'll talk about is using your voice with conviction this is very important as an in-game leader because you need your, your teammates need to believe in what you're saying um, even if you don't believe in what you're saying, because that's totally possible sometimes, it's, it happens to people all the time, um, but you need your teammates to believe in what you're saying, whether it's 
you're talking about a strat or you're creating something on the fly in a match and it involves an adjustment to what the other team's doing, um, no matter what it is, you need to be able to say it confidently and firmly and you need to have all ears so that every you know that everyone's focusing on what you're saying and you're getting the point across and you're being clear. Again, remember that conviction in the voice, super important. Uh, just being careful with with how you actually uh, use your words and how you're directing um, what it is that you say, whether whether it's so making sure that you're kind of addressing the whole team and that you're not singling anyone out um, and that you're not sounding like a dictator. Because again, you you you're a team and you want everyone to believe in you and you want them to be you know with you. Like so, if you're you know if you need to mount a comeback um, and you need everyone with you, then you kind of need to essentially jump down in the trenches, you know, and and ride that out with them you know so you need to be the guy leading the charge sh literally leading by example you know so if you feel like we need to change and we need to play a certain way then you need to be like the front man and and addressing that very clearly and showing by example what it is that we need to do because then everyone will need to will uh they'll just naturally like latch on and they'll understand like okay i gotta do this right but um it's very important that especially in match setting that you're not singling anyone out you know, or making anyone feel like they've been playing poorly or they've been making bad decisions, you know, or you feel like, or they feel, or they feel like uh, you're putting them in positions where they're just like holding an angle because you don't trust them and things like that. Um, it's very, very important that you always have belief in, in your entire team. The fifth thing that we'll talk about is energy. Uh, the in-game leader needs to bring the most energy to the team because again, like they're kind of like, the head man, everyone's gonna feed off of you. So whatever energy you bring to the team, that's what your teammates are gonna reflect. So, you know, if you show up and you're kind of like tired, and you're like, uh, and you're like, uh, default. You know, it's it's like practice or the match is not gonna go that well. So you need to be able to uh, come very energized and, you know, your ideas are flowing, you're talking all the time and you're, you're even vocalizing things like, oh, I learned something that round, guys, you know, or, um, sorry, that was my fault, you know what I mean? And just vocalizing those different things, that's super important for an in-game leader because again, people are gonna feed off that energy and that's kind of what you want. You wanna be able to inspire the rest of your team to reflect the same kind of energy that you bring to the table. So those are the five things and they're all very important for an in-game leader. So I hope it helped. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully these five things that we talked about will help you become a better in-game leader and I'll see you in the next video.